The following is a hoop ball presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. All right, good morning. For real this time, I'm not going to screw this up. I am going to screw this up. This is Fantasy NBA Today. It's live Friday. I'm Dan Vespers. He's Aaron Bruski. The big dog is in the building, and the big dog Uh-oh. saith, that's what I'm talking about. And of course, you can see the delicious logo on your screen if you're watching this thing on YouTube Live. If you're listening later on, we'll tell you about it. This show, like all of our shows, is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Brew, you got a box on the desk there? You usually have your prop with you. You know, no prop today? Too far away, man. I can't reach it, but I'm there stocked go. up. There you go. So it's in the third. We're, we're all good. What I, up, Glenn? What up, Glenn? I did the big reveal on yesterday's podcast by accident. I meant to do it with Mike on Wednesday that uh, we had a winner of the contest donating their Hawaiian Isles prize to Mike Apatria. But now I don't even know if he knows there's just going to be a box that shows up at his door, which is going to be we pretty sweet. We didn't tell him, did we? No, well, I didn't tell I, Only if he listened to yesterday's podcast, which I doubt he did because he's a ridiculously busy man who doesn't sleep. And... I wouldn't dare say, hey, spend another 40 minutes listening to a show where I explain things you've already researched. That seems redundant. Anyway, uh, pretty cool prize showing up at Mike's doorstep. We still got a couple more of those DFS contests next week, but uh, big thank you to Hawaiian Isles. Kona Coffee Company, HawaiianIsles.com. You can search for Hawaiian Isles on Amazon, or you can bug them on Twitter, at H-I Kona Coffee. Brew, um... A lot of things upset my stomach in this world, and the fantasy playoffs right now are at the absolute tip top of that list. I got up this morning, and within like 45 minutes of me taking care of my child, but also at the same time going through 900 streaming options for the last three days of the week, I had developed a uh, a stomach ailment. Do you ever watch? We were talking before going on air on this one. uh, This is an NBC show. Do you watch The Good Place at all? No. It's but I want good. to. Yeah. And I see the commercial and I go, yeah, that might be something I'd watch. But then I never figure out how to actually get to the show. So wifey forced me to watch it. And I'm glad she did. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's by the guys who did uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Parks and Rec. Uh, so oh, it's got, there you go. Yeah. Good people behind it. Um, and it's funny. And then one of the characters, basically, anytime he has to make a decision, he gets a stomach ache. I can re- <laughs> <laughs> I can relate with that guy right now. Because uh, I'm staring down the barrel of a very weird week. I think everybody is. Brew, on a scale from one to a million, how many players are going to be shut down tonight before, before the uh, game start? Honestly, it started happening yesterday, and I just feel for everybody that likes head-to-head. I mean, it just is a... It's a There's no good answer. We talk about this every single year. Mm-hmm. You can end your playoffs in... You know, like basically right after the All Star break. But that's not fun, that. though. I mean, your season's like fifteen weeks long, and then you just sit and watch for a month and a half. I, I mean, we're we're you know one of my favorite head to head leagues, the um, Thirty Deep. You know, I, I'm I made the playoffs. I've got a pretty damn good team. Unfortunately, it doesn't make it to the end, and a lot of it comes down to just weird stuff. You know, these guys are doing battle right now. Right now, Rick Kamla is doing battle. With uh, Matt Stroop, these two old war horses, and you know, Jimmer Fredette is like, you know, become this. Uh, well, I loved it. But like, not only, I feel like we need to even tell more of the story, which is we got so many people that, well, there's only four teams left, but uh, because Jimmer wasn't added to the system yet, a, an email to the league actually went out saying, I am staking claim to Jimmer the second he gets added. That was an old warhorse move, by the way. Yeah. Camo went up. That was a solid above the board rule. That, uh, but look at what's getting. Look at how the league is getting decided. You know, if Jimmer comes from where was he playing? China <laughs> comes into the league and you know probably scores forty one night. Just yeah, but you know who else is uh, still hanging around in the thirty deep playoffs? Is our good buddy and honorary hoop baller Benny Aziz. He's dangerous, man. His team's uh, sick. Benny, Benny knows his stuff, and uh, that's yeah. It's it's, but this head to head thing, I I really, I can't wait to be the part of the innovators that fix issues like these as we roll out some of the development stuff that we'll be rolling out in the coming years. 
Um, it's hard because, it's, because there, it's a it's a problem without a solution with the way the system's currently set up. You can't you can't get around silly season. So what do you do? You know? I I don't know. I've heard of a few different suggestions, and all of them have their own new issues, like the idea of games capping. The playoffs basically were like, look, you got 50 games to use however you choose, but then it's basically whoever's silly season loses the least impactful guys. Because then you're the only way for a team, and I'm going through this right now, uh, and I know they say don't talk about your own fantasy team, but I'm going to do it anyway, where, you know, I was dealing with the Kevin Love thing and the Zach Levine thing, and last week it was the Jimmy Butler rest day. And so for me, it was like, okay, I lost three of my like top five guys in a spot a games cap actually would hurt me there because my only hope of winning in that point is to really cleverly game out my long streaming to turn four moves in a week into like six extra games because unless my opponent loses three of his top five guys I'm gonna get my butt kicked so that doesn't work I have no idea what to do to solve this because I don't want to end the season early that's the only real solution that makes sense uh, and if I don't want to do that, then I'm left with no options. So then okay. I just have a stomach ache. That's my I option. I completely understand why people love daily formats and they love the idea of streaming because you're more just into it. You know, you got way more action. It, it, it favors the people that are better fantasy players that do the work. So you, you, I get that. I almost don't want to mess with that at all. But. <clears throat> Streaming has also, you know, if you play in a lot of leagues, I, I like the the weekly league setup to the extent that it forces everybody to have that one decision point at one point in time on Monday where you kind of got to just weigh all the risks out and, and then go with what you think is best. That That's one thing. Um, Maybe you go weekly with like the opportunity to sub in one guy if a guy we actually gets- looked at that in the uh, FBA which is hmm. the toughest fantasy league out there bar none the best players in the world play in this league um how did it how did it turn out because it seems like it's got some legs to it where if your guy goes down find, on it a- yeah we it was it was proposed probably i want to say 6 years ago and um we couldn't find a way to do it hmm. and because the weekly, like, you get, this was like, you know, Chris Dunn at the beginning of the year is like, okay, you're going to start him for week one, and then he gets hurt. Okay, he's back. You're going to start him for week two. Okay, he gets hurt. So, you know, you just got zeros <laughs> for two straight weeks. Right, they but can, if you could uh, sub him out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, throw in yeah. one bench guy, and you're like, okay, this is my one move of the week. If someone else gets hurt on a Thursday, you just sort of swallow it, I guess, right? Yeah, it, it, what it ended up being was the administrative burden was it was just not there like Mm. people didn't want that to be a part of it but yeah that could be a way to address it but you know outside of a i mean the the innovation in the um commissioner league commissioner space just isn't there right now i mean i just watched espn roll out new game logs for their um non-fantasy products that don't even show missed games and they brutalized their product this last season. So, um, oh yeah, they're you know, they're unusable. It's un- I've been, never been out of that. They've been struggling. And, uh, I kind of like what Yahoo's doing out there. Um, you know, but there needs to be more innovation in order to yeah to fix some of these issues. Because what we're going to talk about when you guys are asking questions, it's like, okay, cool, I can tell you this right now. But guess what? You know, you have no idea what's coming through the pipeline at three p.m. today. Oh, it ain't yes. going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be. <sighs> bad and you just hope that it happens worse to your oppo- your opponent than it does to you so um you know you do your best and there is something to be said at draft day for you know targeting good playoff schedules as well as targeting teams that aren't going to be subject to the whims of silly season but really come on like yeah you don't know kinda, yeah we can kind of do this a little bit but you know you could you could take like a team like atlanta and be like well you know they're just sort of playing you know, they don't care. Yeah. They're actually, um, they're look actually at what going. they get in the middle of the season to their guys. Like the pre hey, an ankle injury, you got you got the the six to eight weeks off, you know. Yeah, we didn't go, know about the pre tank. Uh, tra- registered, registered trademark. The pre tank. Long streaming yeah. and pre tank. 
We didn't know that it, it killed you at the beginning of the year instead of the end. But I guess if you know for playoff leagues, you're more worried about the end of the year. But still, you looked at teams this year and you thought, okay, you know, uh, if the Grizzlies didn't unload all of their pieces, they might have been a little more competitive. Uh, the Pels, you figured, would be playing towards the end, at, barring a crazy... fighting for a playoff yeah. standing. The, to the try Wolves, to keep Davis, you the, know, the Wolves should have been fighting for a playoff spot. I mean, all these teams, and not the Wolves, didn't have a particularly good playoff schedule. So maybe I'm not using the best example here. But if you're drafting based on who you think is going to be fighting for the eight seed, you may have some bad fortune that comes your way. I think you really, I, I think it's okay to draft based on playoff schedule. So you look at a team, you're like, okay, the Kings have 12 games in the playoffs. Even if they're tanking 12 games, if you get most of those, you're still in pretty good shape. Whereas, you know, like... The Kings entered the season not telling anybody that Zach Randolph wasn't going to play a single (laughs) minute. (laughs) Don't don't draft (laughs) Zeebo. Well, was it about drafting Zeebo? Are they going to duplicate one of the worst decisions that we've seen in a while? You know, are they going to do Are you over? Are you on my side now that it was one of the most brilliant tank jobs in recorded history? Honestly, I think Dave Yeager is a very good basketball coach. Like, just X's and O's, understanding the game. He's forgotten more than we'll ever know. So it may, it makes sense to me that there was a tank. He, that he knew that it was brutal, just brutalizing their their on court performance. And it was. I, I'm I'm very. I, I think it's this. I think it was one of the subtlest, bestest tank jobs. <laughs> that you you're gonna come across that's fascinating to me i mean because like he convinced everybody in our in our small town you know that this was a really smart basketball decision and it got parroted from the top of the top and i mean he zach randolph gets credit for all these young guys improving their games through hard work over the summer and you know like all they all they did was just move him out Mm. and the improvement came. Hey, before we get into your questions, Dan, though, yeah, you know, and enough about the Kings. Um, it's exciting right now. I think for for a lot of hoop ball squads, like you know, some of the guys that got hurt in in, in the early part of the year, like Clint Capella. Um, you know, he's back and he's going. Um, Valanciunas. See- How about Valanciunas? Valanciunas, um, Middleton. Um, you he's know, with, with the injuries. Shots getting to to maybe just sort of somewhat redeem himself after <laughs> what really like if you look at consistency with the NBA he had he's like the easiest projection to predict and then he just falls off the radar this year that hurt me personally um but the uh yeah some some of our guys are are getting going and um you know at the right time and and I got one team that has an outside at the FBA has an outside shot at the first uh, winning the whole thing with what will end up being like a 22 roto point comeback. Oof, man. In about three to four weeks. It is firing, man. I, it's like a Christmas present. Every single night I open up the stat tracker looking at this and hoping that the, um, you know, that like the Kings the other night, that the 25 point lead in the fourth quarter is not safe. Hmm. Well, I'm hoping for the best. I got uh, I got a few good things going. I don't know if I'm going to end up in first in any of my roto leagues, but I got I'm pretty locked into second in one, third or second in the other. That's that's money. That's what I'm good with. I'll take home some cash. Uh, questions for you, Brew, and they're all pretty injury related, so we'll deal with them best we can, and then we'll transition over to the chat room. And we might, frankly, not have a full sixty minute show today. That would not be the end of the world. Frankly, there's a million things going on, and there'll probably be news that people need to pay attention to at the end of it. Uh, Minnesota shutdowns. That's where we're starting on this thing. The Wolves officially shutting down Rob Covington, Jeff Teague, and Derek Rose, and then Taj Gibson is sort of like a maybe shutdown right now. Can anybody jump up and over the cusp? Because uh, I haven't been super impressed with the other Timberwolves, even though they've been given an opportunity now. Tyus Jones feels like the safe play. Can Dario Saric move over the ledge here? They also have a, by the way, pretty bad playoff schedule going on for head-to-head leaguers. But if you're no, if you're rolling with games cap stuff, could any of them be a nine cat value going forward? Ugh. I mean, this is a, a weirdly unproductive fantasy squad. You'd think with some defined roles and you know everybody getting mostly thirty minutes or above. But Saric is not. He's just not producing. 
You know, he, he's he's he was kind of there last in, in the, uh, last night's game. You know, fifteen and seven, two threes, but like getting nothing out of him for defense. Um, I, I have a hard time telling people to just go all in on on him when theoretically, if you do get Gibson, who doesn't need to play, you know, if he does take time off, this should theoretically open things up. Um, you've seen Andrew Wiggins be off the court a little bit. This is not a lot. Of, of stuff standing in, in his way, but he's just not able to get over the hump. I mean, he's playable, but who, I mean, it's, it's betting on a lot that this is the moment that he's good this year. Hmm. Um, so now, I mean, Tyus Jones is fine. He, he, to me, he's not a must start guy, but he's pretty damn close. Um, yeah. It's just not nothing cooking. Yeah. Well, that's where we are now. Uh, Phoenix, Kelly Oubre, out. Josh Jackson hurt his ankle yesterday. TJ Warren hasn't seen the light of day in forever. What do we got going on? Oh, Tyler Johnson. Sorry, almost forgot one of the guys that they've got out. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, he's doing his low usage thing that always works out pretty nicely. Rashawn Holmes actually had a really nice game uh, with DeAndre Ayton picking up some fouls and kind of dealing with Andre Drummond throughout that ball game. Can anybody get up and over the hump in Phoenix that we haven't talked about in the past? They have a four game week in the final real week of the season. So uh that that's very intriguing if your league goes that far or if you're in a roto league and you're just looking to kind of squeeze off four game weeks in the uh end of the, the season. So like Rashawn Holmes, it's good as long as he's not hurt, which it seems like based on the last performance, they were able to sort of figure that thing out and uh not a huge deal. Whether or not they or <laughs> Whether or not they want him going off is an interesting question because if you could keep him underneath the radar without having some massive explosive games, you know that might theoretically help you re-sign him if you're Phoenix. I think if you're a GM with any brain whatsoever, you're like, just don't play. Don't play Holmes. Like, just have a nice quiet end of the season and buy him for like $8 million and just reap the rewards. Uh, but Bridges is the one that you got 12 shots up in this last one. So uh, that you could continue to see. And he's the guy who, if they somehow flip a switch and they go, hey, man, we want to see what you got. You know, let's get your number up to 14, 15 shots per game. You're going to see kind of what happened in this last one here. You got seven assists in that game. So he could be huge down the stretch. And this is just a cherry on top of an amazing season. Glad we led the charge there. Glad that we told people not to drop him. Glad that, you know, we we just stayed the course. And, you know, he's on all of our squads. And, um, you know, he's going to be good. You know, to me, a must-start player. Unless you're category hunting, which is the big disclaimer on anything we're going to say here today. If his categories don't help you, you got to move on. Um, or, or maybe not move on, but, you know, not have him in your lineup. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be good. It's going to be fun um, for him because I could see Booker getting an early rest. Aiton has pretty much run out of gas. So I think he could be a candidate for rest, which kind of works against the Holmes stand underneath the radar stuff, but also adds to the appeal of either adding, stashing, or just keeping an eye on Holmes and being ready to move on him as the season winds down. Uh, shout out, by the way, to my guy Wayne Ellington in that game who hit uh, six three pointers and has. Uh, I saw 15. that. Yeah, he's he's floating. What's his, man. What's his number, Dan? Do we, what are we, I don't, I don't what know. Are we looking at? I don't remember what he, when he joined the the Pistons. <laughs> I do know that. Let's see. Uh, his well, six and seven in the last two is going to bump it up a little bit. And prior to that, it was one four three two three, which oh, is so he's at three point one. <laughs> is that what that comes out to? <laughs> seven, let's see, know. seven games, 8, 12, 13, 20, 26. So what did I say? Seven, by seven. seven. Oh, you might be at your 3.4 then. That's over the last seven games, though. That's just, oh, as that's, far that back as my, that's just as far back as my screen goes. I don't know, pull up. I, when did he get traded? Was it February 13th? Was that his first game with the new team? What were we counting? Just his Detroit days? That's what I'm working on here. I don't know, man. Somebody else uh, do I got it. your answer. I got your answer here. Give me two seconds. I'll get your answer. Oh, yeah. Unless they should he, break it down by team, huh? Well, but the problem is his first game in Detroit, he played like 12 minutes and didn't hit any threes. So it's going to drag it down. That 0 for 7. My it, God, ESPN. <laughs> I, I, I did find the person that developed the um, the fantasy app. I will not share that information. 
Three point oh, Dan. Three point Yeah, but you yeah, but you did three point oh. You got to pull out that first game though. All right, all yeah. right. So, so what did he get? Zero in that game? Yeah, he played nineteen minutes and didn't hit any. And then uh, he played thirty three minutes in the next one. So I think he, he got fifty one as a member of Detroit over sixteen over. 16 games so 16 into 51 is yeah, it's about three, three and then three into 16 is 3.1 dan <laughs> 3.1 yeah but he's on the rise baby he's coming in hot he was under that mark two games ago uh he has 13 over his last two that's probably he was under three before that come on wayne i need you baby keep it rolling we really upped our our, our street cred with the nerds yeah here. with the way with the wayne ellington with numbers guy. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. injury. Does that change anything in Dallas for you? Is there anybody you'd pick up? I mean, they're a, they're a mishmash of mess. I mean, Brunson is probably already picked up in all those leagues. So yeah, he's, he's so. the guy that's really benefited. Um, I mean, if you squint and you wanted to look at Brokoff, I mean, maybe he, he gets, if you need three pointers, you know, maybe he gets loose. Um, mm. <laughs> maybe trey burke possibly you know hmm. all right well we'll keep an eye on it <laughs> Dallas. I mean, that's that's kind of what this is all about right now is like we're we actually just mentioned ryan broke off on the show yeah i'm pretty sure he um is his did, name even ryan am i <laughs> yeah you're right i think he didn't he do the news for like 30 years in the 1970s through the 90s Right. Uh, until a scandal rocked him, I'm sure. Like, Man, who hasn't been? Uh, who else we got on the injured list here? Uh, CJ McCollum being out. It actually, it, it, I thought maybe Rodney Hood. It seems like it's actually been Seth Curry playing a bunch of basketball lately. Yeah, Rodney Hood is just uh, not good. I was no, I was trying not to rhyme, but it was just right there. Rodney um, Hood's just not good. He's a just not good. By, and by Dr. Um, Brew. but yeah, but Seth is ready to score, so. I, I think that that's, you know, points, threes, you know, tiny helping of assists, but not really. Um, that's that's definitely something something to look at if you need help. And a four game week next week, and a four game mm-hmm. week the week after that. Yep, so absolutely, Portland schedule. And he's gonna he's gonna get those minutes the rest of the way. So seems like it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Hood is not gonna impact him there. It's gonna be Seth Curry. Uh, the Bucks lost Malcolm Brogdon for the rest of the regular season and then part of the playoffs and then lost Nico Miritich for the rest of the regular season uh, as well. It would assume, assume uh, I would assume, I should say. Um, so this kind of takes them back almost to where they were at the start of the year. Um, you know, Ersan Ilyasova at power forward. He's going to have to do a little bit more. The point guard spot, it seems like, is not necessarily said we saw more pat Connaughton in their last ball game is he the guy is Connaughton the guy that gets over the hump or is he just going to play more minutes and his usage is going to be so low that it doesn't matter no i think he's worth a look um i think he can have a little bit of a robust stat set for what he is um you know his last game 11 three and four but then you get two steals to go with those two threes so I think he's he's on the radar, um, you know, in this silly season, probably 14, 16 team leagues. You're just trying to, you know, get some threes and and, and get a player that's got a chance of being productive. Um, it, it, it's not something you're getting excited about at all. But but I think the we're going to get to see a lot of Chris Middleton. This is interesting. You know, we did this conversation just now in the Cos and Brew Show, which will be out later today, is – are the Bucks? Are they? They are. They're at risk, I think, in the one seed against the Heat in the eight seed. Um, and Middleton's had a really, yeah. You know, we talked about this earlier. He struggled. He's going to get a chance. They could use this period to get Middleton going, which would be a great thing for them in the playoffs. Um, but Middleton, Lopez, Bledsoe, they're going to have some monster numbers. And then Giannis, of course, when he's not getting rested. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Stuff. It almost. Yeah. I. I'm. I just so many side. theoreticals and hypotheticals. I it's, know it's exhausting. It's it, a, and, and on a show when you got to kind of simplify it, condense it, and then spit it out, it's just it's a mess. Uh, that's why I'm sighing deeply between could, every every single one of these questions. Like, well, I gotta ask it, but I mean, 
what the hell do we know about who's going to rest in the next one? Okay, next thing on the list, the Lakers. LeBron took a game off for the for a non-back-to-back. They called it groin injury, but he's considered probable for their game tonight. What we've seen, and this seems to be with or without LeBron, is that KCP is playing for a contract here down the stretch. Is that a trustworthy name uh, for the next two and change weeks of basketball? Oh, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> they do have a good schedule, yeah. though. Yeah, and 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 I've been sort of watching, and, and that's going to be the, this will be the thing I'm watching in LA is what does Alex Caruso do? You know, he could be this sort of you know very productive fantasy asset. The the steals and blocks the other night were completely just out of control. Um, KCP theoretically is your safe play there. Um, can't really trust him. Um, what's going on with contracts and you know his his representation as far as LeBron and all that goes is is an interesting little subplot. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's play that out a little bit. It, it does the do the Lakers in an effort to keep Rich Paul happy? Do they make sure that he gets shots and that, that he that he gets minutes? And it seems and like it. It seems like it right now. He's he uh, basically since the Lakers went into this full tank mode, KCP's played uh 31 22 29 28 and 34 minutes he's taken 11 12 9 11 and 20 shots over those five games some of them with and some of them without lebron he's just like he's uh, he's hucking them up there now it's it's so funny how the nba works like this there's a lot of that stuff you know shots touches minutes like you know what i've been guaranteed you know, what does management want? All that stuff. It's really kind of where the money gets made on this in the fantasy side. But uh, I, I personally would rather have Caruso over KCP. Hmm. I just want to see what he can do um, as a versatile fantasy producer. If, if if you're looking to give a player 28 minutes per game that, you know, as you're semi-tanking down the stretch – to, you might as well see what you have in Caruso. He's he might in some ways be better than KCP. I, I think the Lakers have a lot to gain by getting him out there on the floor, and then he has been a bit of a stat magnet. So I personally would rather own Caruso. I made a big play on on um, in the FBA league to get him. Um, I would not have made the same big play to get KCP. So I'll go Caruso over KCP. All right, fair enough. Uh, Avery Bradley out for at least a week. Mike Conley resting in half of back-to-backs. It feels like it's DeLon's time to shine, finally, no? Yeah, no, absolutely. Right, and an um, easier one. Yeah, he's been fairly good. Um, we know what we're getting out of him. He hasn't really been cut loose yet, so there's some upside that we haven't realized yet. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think he's absolutely on the radar. Schedule's not great, but, you know, at this time of year, you're just sort of looking for players that have upside that have the potential to, um, you know, have the offense sort of hover around them a little bit. Um, that said, though, they, they, they don't really um, – it doesn't look like they're ready to turn the team over to him just yet. No. So there's a, they got to kind of cap that upside talk a little bit. Um, still trying to win games. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, so do Lakers fans trying for a higher pick like yours truly. Um, the last thing on my list was Trevor Ariza now out for the Washington Wizards. That feels like it's got to be the, the, the death blow for them, right? Like they're finally going to say, okay, we're not going to make it. Have they finally given up? They have to have given up now, right? They might even be statistically out of it. I haven't run the numbers yet. Um, but the, uh, you got Scott Brooks there. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it does feel that way, though, that, that this was the turning point that we're, that we're talking about. I think we've been covering this turning point the last two weeks in the Daily Dish. I do write uh, another one up tonight. Um, getting kicked out of the playoffs and making that writing on the wall could make it really tough to push Bradley Beal, Trevor Ariza, et cetera, through injury or just you know through the end of a grind of a season. So this is why you didn't drop Thomas Bryant. Top 40. Or pardon me, top uh, fifty. We'll just we'll we'll round up top fifty players since the beginning of December. Is he going to be turned loose 
because yesterday you got a ton of time against Nikola Jokic. They've got Miami coming up. They're a relatively big team. Or was this more matchup stuff? And we can continue to expect kind of the 15 some nights, 35 some nights, 20 some nights, where it evens out nicely. But if he goes big every night, he could be a monster. Well, I mean, let's let's look at this. He's been a top 59 cat guy since the beginning of December. Since if you measure from December 1st to today. So this has been while it's been crappy for him. So <clears throat> if he does get this opportunity, I mean, you're looking at a possible top 30, top 20 type of a run here. I mean, uh, th- that's that's outstanding. Um, you know, good schedule i believe off the top of my head for some reason i'm not remembering their schedule off the top they of my had head, a but... good one let me see if it continues yeah i think they're i think they might be in the middle of the good schedule right oh, no, now it's still good you're right yeah they were they were a 444 i couldn't remember what next week was but it's another four spot for them this is i i sometimes you got to go with the numbers like if if somebody is that good in that small amount of a time just because it's somewhat inconsistent just because, you know, it sucks to look at the box score and see a bad night, 16 minutes and, you know, some like two money counting stats. But this is the beauty of his fantasy game is he shoots the free throw pretty well and he almost always gets you two money counters no matter what. And usually three. Yeah, he's actually so, at 82% at the free throw line. So even better than kind of well. He's been very he, he's, good. He, here's another thing about him. He just doesn't look good on the court. Like, he's not a defender at all. No, no, not even a little. But that fits he with looks, Washington. Like, he wouldn't play on most teams at all. Um, but, no, I mean, look, this is kind of like he has gotten sold short. You know, there was people calling you stupid for holding him out there. I mean, it's okay to disagree, but like you're stupid for holding on to a top 50 asset. I don't know what that's all about. Um, so yeah, it's going to be fun for him. And then, um, you know, Troy Brown, I think um, you would like to, he didn't get a money counter in this last game, um, but he's somebody to take a look at. Hmm. It just all comes back to Scott Brooks though. Like he comes yeah. from this old school, don't quit until the last, you know, until the 83rd game, even though. You're not playing an 83rd game. Yeah, and Jabari Parker obviously is just going to go nuts for the next couple of games, right? Same thing with Bobby Portis. I mean, yeah. the two of them will alternate big lines. You know, there's not going to be a lot of consistency in whether or not you get steals or blocks out of the guys. But yeah, both of those guys are going to have fun. Um, you know, Trevor Ariza could come back and have fun. It's it's whoever's going to play is going to have fun. There's going to be no pressure on them, and it's just going <laughs> to they're just going to run it out there. And um, Utter I, I think it's going to be a great fantasy team, the Wizards. Let's talk questions. We got a few. We got a handful here. We're going to speed our way through them. Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, we see, your, we, Jerry we see your post in the chat room, man. We're not at the chat room yet. If this is your first one of these, uh, that's cool. And we welcome you, but that's not how it goes. We do the, our big topics first, then we get to the chat room. Did, did, did Jerry want the show to be all about Jerry? <laughs> no, he just was upset that Caruso had a dud in his last ballgame. I'm which just is playing. True. I'm playing Jerry. Which is true, though. Uh, Caruso did have kind of a clunker in his last one. Uh, oh, yeah. He, th- he absolutely did. And, uh, yeah, I'm good with that. I, I, I don't think, like, when I see Caruso, I go, yeah, that's like the last eight games. You know, think like Patty Mills. I want to say like two years ago, he had two straight years of the last couple games of the season just going nuts. Like he, to me, profiles as the perfect garbage time Lakers player. Uh, let's see. Uh, Frank, me and Kangs don't talk anymore. Was asking about guys on on shutdown teams. Hopefully, we covered the ones that you were referring to. If not, feel free to throw a question at the end of the uh, chat. We'll we'll get into that. Uh, VP, would you guys drop a guy like Jeremy Lamb who's only playing once uh, in that last... Well, let's see. Let me look at the streaming schedule to make sure that I'm getting these numbers right. Charlotte has... Ah, yes, I see what you're talking about. So Charlotte only has one game over the first four days of next week, and then they go two more towards the end of the week. So it's a it's a backloaded three-game week. So now we'll I'll pivot back to the question here, and I think it'll make more sense. Would you trade? Would you drop him for somebody that's playing either twice or even three times those first three games of the week? My answer to that VP is, you know, it comes down to the numbers. Uh, assuming the guy you pick up is having is a four game week guy, then you're gaining one game over Jeremy Lamb. 
Or are you turning that spot into one where after those first four days where you have three games and you pick someone else up who has another two games? Because then maybe it's worth it. Five games out of fringe streaming guys versus three out of Lamb, that's fairly comparable. I think the five-gamer probably has a little bit of an edge even. But you have to be... You have to understand kind of what you're dropping versus what you're picking up. Are there any other guys that are out there? Could you potentially get Lamb back for his two games over the last three days? Uh, I almost had to drop Jimmy Butler this week because he only had one game over four days and half my team was falling off the map hurt. I just needed more games played. So you got to weigh those things out, you know, run the numbers, look at the competition. Uh, Lamb has been great lately, shot the ball poorly last night, but his role is, is colossal right now. Um, so I would say certainly be careful with that. Brew, I'm going to come over to you for a non-streaming question. Uh, Will Barton, DeAndre Ayton, in next week, we're looking ahead here, I think. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Uh, right after you said Will Barton. Uh, DeAndre Ayton is the other choice for next week. Assuming they're both healthy, which one do you think you'd be starting next week? Uh, just real quick, I believe Denver has four games. Correct, right? yeah. yeah. Um. I'm probably still going with Aiton. It is just it's a, still a very crowded situation in Denver. Aiton for all of the kind of slowing down and he's even admitted he says look I'm beat. This is, you know, he's he's pretty pretty talkative actually for a rookie in a small market. Um so but now Aiton has this potential to, you know, he's a top 30 40 guy, so he has potential to really rock and uh Barton it's not going to take much for him to fall off. Um, he has been playing better, so that's nice. Um, and you would expect that to continue as they gear up for the playoffs. But now give me Aiton in that case. So uh, let's see. What do we got here? Should I drop Josh Kogi to get two games out of Bruno Caboclo? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I, look, the Caboclo has gotten um, – he made a little bit more noise recently. If you're using him, you're you're going for basically money-counting stats. Um. Yeah, I, I would go in. It's funny, I forgot who the first guy is. Okogi. Okogi's, uh, he's been on my radar because I do need money counting stats in this big money league. And um, he's sort of disappointed in that area. I have no problem going Kaboklo over Okogi. All right, fair enough. Uh, how do you guys see the D'Lo, Dinwiddie, Levert thing shaking out on more of a dynasty approach? So we got a nice long-term question from our buddy Connor Sullivan. That's uh, It's nice to not think streaming for a couple of seconds just to take some of my stomach pain away. What do you think about these guys going forward, Brew? Are they, are they all going to stay with the Nets? Can they really create room for all three of those guys long term? I hope not. I mean, that's going to be bad for all of them involved. Um, you know, right now, Karis Levert is just not there. Um, you know, the, the pretty bad injury and, you know, trying to come back on the fly when the, the team is – when you make D'Angelo Russell an all-star – that's you know you're just sort of emboldening him to do what he does and so as a restricted free agent you know what is the deal that he's going to get offered i i really just i've been seeing people talk about max money for him like okay um i mean they they were hiding him on defense i believe he was covering Corey brewer against the kings at one point um so this a lot. The market's going to determine this. So if D'Angelo Russell gets signed to a new team, that's probably best case scenario for his value because that means they want him and he's got you know a role carved out for him. If he gets matched by Brooklyn, that's not going to be good for him. Like there's a legitimate argument to be made that Spencer Dinwiddie is a better fit for that squad um, with Levert also in the mix. I think that. If Levert's injury, you know, just sort of it kind of goes along a normal course of a serious injury, but it doesn't impact him long term, he'll be the better player. So he'll end up pushing, you know, the ball out of Russell's hands. And at any rate, they're all going to have to share it. So if they all stay in Brooklyn, I would call Russell probably a top 60 guy in eight cat leagues if all three stay healthy for a year. Uh, Dinwiddie's obviously going to be lower than that. He's going to be probably a top 100 guy, and then Levert could probably edge his way up to the top 60 as well in in eight cat formats. In nine cat formats, you got to kind of ding Russell by about 20, 30 ranks, and then you got to look at uh, Levert possibly getting dinged a couple, probably 10, 20 ranks, and then Dinwiddie stays somewhat um, 
similar. So that's if they stay, but you're, you're hoping if you're a D'Angelo Russell backer that he does get a big offer from somebody and then they go let him play point guard. And um, then the, the, the sweet shooting stat set that he's capable of because he can make a floater. This is the big thing. He can get to the rim and make a floater. He's a great three-point shooter, so he could shoot the current 43%. Problem is right now in this situation is he's fluctuating too much. He could go 9 of 25 on any given night. And if he ever loses a step you know, and can't get to the floater, then he could be a 40% shooter. That wouldn't look so great. The uh, next question here from Al says, are there any players you feel dropped in value this year but could be in line for a nice bump next year? So basically the post-hype guys. Have you started to think about that yet, Brew? Uh, I have. I'm trying to wake my brain up and, and see um, you know, if anybody sort of fits that criteria here. Um, I'll admit, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't done a ton of digging on that. I'm, I'm, generally, I look for guys that were drafted pretty high and then wildly underperformed and gauge whether or not I think that's a one-time blip or a more permanent change. Um, You know, like an Oladipo, who even before his injury, his free throw percent was way down. His field goal percent was way down. Is he a guy that gets drafted around later next year and then jumps back up again? He's a weird sort of case study because he's now shown that he can have good years and bad years. And a lot of it comes down to fit with him so this year they stocked up their team a little bit Tyreek Evans came on board you know there's too many players and I think he kind of tightened up and tried to do maybe a little bit too much but at the same time you know that's why that's kind of what he was supposed to be there for so that's uh worked against him in every respect the injury has been a disaster for anybody that's drafted a uh, Victor Oladipo I I know I had him in a couple places it's uh not been pretty um, post hype. Okay, I got Let me. I got a game for you now. I'm gonna. We'll we'll play the post type game. Uh, this is this is very much a lightning round type deal. So we can we can more than adjust our thoughts later on. But just initial uh, inclinations are: Do these guys bounce back next year? We already did Oladipo. Next one on the list is Chris Middleton. Does he bounce back next year? I'm not sure where he'll be. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Okay, uh, next one on the list is Draymond Green. I guess you can no. say not sure, not no. sure where he'd be. No, I, you worry about his athleticism. Yeah, That's, I agree with that one. A lot of his value in defensive categories, and yeah, he could end up actually being a a whack fantasy all star if he's not careful. Uh, Kevin Love, does he stay more healthy? Ne- I mean, it'd be tough to be less healthy than this season, but can he be? closer to a third or fourth round guy next year i i don't know if i can bring myself to draft that guy i don't blame you jamal murray oh yeah he's a post hype uh aaron gordon who's been a a a disappointment multiple years in a row i think he might just be this guy (laughs) yeah until somebody tells him he's not a point guard or a guard it's never gonna be good (laughs) excuse me i had to cough it's still there. A uh, couple of nuggets. Gary Harris, Will Barton. Can they bounce back next year? Uh, they can, but there's a lot going on with that team. You know, sort of how do they flesh out their their newfound depth? You know, that they, they got to get rid of some bodies via trade. So that's too easy. It's too hard to tell with uh, those guys. But couple, with couple. Harris, he's going to be better than this, this last year. He can't be this bad. Couple of point guards here. Ricky Rubio, uh, three point guards. Ricky Rubio, Goran Dragic, Jeff T. Can any three of those any of those three guys bounce back next year? I, I think they I think they like T and, and Dragic can. Um, I'm worried about Ricky Rubio. I think this might be the the wheels falling off. There might be some value in that, you know, but are we really trying to get that value? That's that's not a great bet. But uh the other two, um, if they can stay healthy, yeah, they'll be better. But, yeah, I'm not looking at those three for pretty much any reason next year. Okay, I'm not going too much farther here because once you get past, like, 75 in the draft, then it's tough to... I think the, the big name that I'm seeing as I'm sort of scrolling through I have, here... I have one for you. Is this? I wonder if we're about to say the same one. Isaac. Oh, I wasn't even going to say that one because he's actually not that far off from... He was drafted, like, at, what, 90, and he's, like, number 125? Yeah, well, I think the competitive websites had him higher. Like the ADP yeah, for him might have been 
a low, lower number because of just the public. And, and also, it's been a very public year. I just want to throw that out there um, just for general consumption. The public, and I had that concern going into this season, is the public um, really made out on some picks that they probably shouldn't have. Um, but the, uh, yeah, no, Isaac, I don't think, I'm, he was getting drafted at 60 mm. in can competitive leagues like i didn't get any of of him anywhere because i and we had him pretty damn high it was just like people were crazy out there taking him in the early 60s um but no i think next year will be a lot better for him i got one interesting name that was drafted not super high but also not super low and has just been not at all himself is could could Gordon Hayward be a way post hype guy next year? I don't think so, man. I think the questions that you had about his athleticism, his ability to create when he was at his peak in Utah were were real. He is nowhere near that anymore. He looks he's the mark out there. I uh, here's a prediction for you in the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if he plays like 17 minutes a game. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if if there's a game that he if like they're if they're behind in a series you know three one like that he doesn't play at all. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at that either. Would you drop Jalen Brunson or Goran Dragic for Thomas Bryant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look look look. I, did I say this already? I love talking about Thomas Bryant right now. I, I can't believe that that the the hate he got as, as an asset at that level. Yeah, you were mad about that even when it happened. I remember that day. Uh, it's like, just don't call people stupid for it. I mean, it's like, you make a bad play, fine. You can live with that. But like calling people stupid? That's a weird move. That. It's a weird move. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Uh, which of these four guys is your favorite for a points league the rest of the way? And we're, we're getting into the more of the streamy type. Seth Curry, who we talked about and you like. Shaq Harrison who's seeing minutes because someone's out for Chicago every game. Uh, Reggie Bullock, who's just the like the most boring. Well, no, I almost called him the most boring of the four, and then Corey Joseph popped up because Darren Collison's out. So Seth Curry, Reggie Bullock, Shaq Harrison, Corey Joseph, who feels like the best points league selection the rest of the way. I think I'm leaning Seth if Curry. If there's a question that epitomizes the problems with playoff this... formats. <laughs> yeah, it's the one. What was the first play? Because I'm like, like, immediately my brain's just like, no. Uh, Seth Curry was the first Reggie Bullock, Shaq Harrison, Corey Joseph are the four names. Well, I mean, Chicago, by the way, we're getting word as we're on air that, uh, Zach Levine is a game time decision for tomorrow. Chris Dunn is also a game time decision for tomorrow with a thing that auto Porter's doubt. Is that what they call it? Basically. basically, (laughs) He's got a thing. He's got a thing. (laughs) It was like, I think it said back. I don't know. It could be anything. Could, uh, could be a I, big booger. I, I, I go, you know what? Hey, go Seth Curry because they got two four game weeks. Seth Curry, final answer. There you go. Yeah, I think it was uh, Chris Dunn is questionable with a a very hard booger in his nose. That's what's got him out right now. This is welcome to playoff basketball, everybody. The famous, was that your own joke or was that an that was, NBA injury report? That was my joke, I think. I don't know if maybe they've used it at some point. They've had, what, like 15,000 different things, so it's probably been in there. But, yeah, we're going to go with that one. Also, uh, I woke up with one of those today, so I felt like I didn't want to play basketball either. Uh, that's about uh, that it. One's worth, hey, that's worth 20 bucks too, Dan. <laughs> Saying the word booger on, a, on our show? Yeah. No, they're, they're disclosing that you had a very hard booger. <laughs> And, and, and it was then fitting it into a Chris Dunjo. Come on, that's got to be worth twenty bucks. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You can, you guys can all, uh, you can put it in my, uh, my electronic piggy bank. You guys can pay for my next DFS loss where you're taking my money anyway. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> How's your bracket doing, Dan? Uh, I didn't make one because I don't know anything about college basketball. Turns all out Nevada is- in the Final Four, not a great idea. <laughs> I don't even know. There are two Nevadas. I don't even know which one is the right one. Well, there's two twins on there's there's two there's a pair of twins on Nevada. I didn't even know that until the Cosm Brew show earlier today. I just thought they looked really similar and played exactly the same. <laughs> so you 
much like me, you're not really piped into the oh, NCAA. No. <laughs> no. no, we don't know anything over here. Yeah, I don't. Bad college basketball freaks me out. Uh, the the final four is like the one time I pay attention because then you see really good teams playing each other. But there's so many. There's like 400 NCAA Division One teams. There are some really awful ones in there, including my my precious Golden Bears, who are one of the worst in the world. Uh, anyway, that I, I think does it actually for our show, believe it or not. Brew, um, anything we're pushing right now? We're at the end of the year. I don't like, I don't, we got our um, nice, we got our nice recruits. So that's good. We got a whole bunch of ratings and reviews from people that like the pot. That's you, sweet. You know, I think the next thing we're pushing for our, um, web developers actually. Oh, yeah. dang. I didn't so know. If you are a um, web developer and you want to join a extremely fun project, um, looking at what those guys are doing right now, I'm s- extremely excited. So uh, that's um, the ah. next thing. Um, we're going to be expanding team coverage here pretty soon. So uh, that's something to keep an eye out for. All right. Come uh, to the Hoob. Join us here yeah. at the Hoob. You too can talk about your hard boogers on a podcast on a Friday. Is that the pitch we're going with? Yep. That's the one I'm rolling with today. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work, I'll try a different ailment. Stomach knows i got them all baby i am a frail individual brew good luck good luck this weekend um i hope you feel better than i do right now i feel great but that is the sign off of the year i hope you keep that one thank you well the next time you have time to make a uh, hoop balls state of the hoob uh I, I can, oh, yeah. i'll point you back to march 22nd when dan talked about his boogers in his stomach multiple times repeatedly to the point where people are probably signing off thanks for listening everybody i don't know why you did so but thank you for doing it uh i am at dan vespers on twitter i talk about this stuff on twitter too he's at aaron brewski he talks about real things on twitter uh hoop ball is at hoop ball fantasy and of course at hi kona coffee juan Isles kona coffee company our proud partner here of all pods shows you name it at hoop dash ball.com Good luck this weekend, everyone. Stream away if necessary. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'll try to get to the questions. I'm going to be watching a lot of these games because I'm freaking the crap out over here. And then we'll be back on Monday to set you up. And hopefully you'll be able to tell in the first sentence I speak on Monday's podcast if my team is still in the playoffs or not. I ain't, I'm not hiding my emotions. They'll be right there on my sleeve. Uh, again, good luck, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you in a couple days. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.